Um, okay, last week, welcome back, everybody. I didn't scare you all away, so I guess that's a good thing. Uh, last week, we talked about the theory and practice of NVIS antennas. Uh, we found out that <clears throat> in practice, NVS antennas don't really stick much to theory. <laughs> <coughs> Mostly, you just have to try them out. So uh, there is that. But NVS, uh, NVIS antennas, uh, it stands for Near Vertical Incident Skywave. And uh, in the old days when we were trying to make fun of the new hams, like myself, uh, we'd call them uh, cloud burner antennas because <clears throat> you didn't have them high enough and you couldn't work Japan, so they weren't any good at all. Uh, so uh, that was pretty much it. What we found out was that uh, this is one of the most fun aspects, I think, of HF radio, and that is you just have to try out different ideas and see which ones work for you in your areas. So uh, that's what uh, we're going to do now. Uh, this week, we promised to talk about some, uh, some specific antennas and some ideas that you might want to uh, try out in the backyard or uh, at the next uh, uh, outing that you guys uh, go to. Uh, we found out that they are mostly all wire and they're all low to the ground. Now, that's pretty much the common elements. Uh, they can be a lot of different lengths. They can be different designs. They can be made up of different things, different mounts, different feed line. Uh, options. Uh, one of which uh, we talked about briefly last week. Somebody mentioned it. It wasn't really in the presentation, <clears throat> but uh, uh, you were talking about flying a kite. And uh, one of our guys in my local club bought uh, a thing called the Kytoon antenna. It was called Kytoon because it's a mashup between kite and balloon. Uh, so it is a, it is a gas-filled balloon uh, that has enough uh, lift to hold up a thin wire antenna. Uh, we tried this a couple of times. Uh, don't waste your money. But it was fun. You know, it was like, oh, okay, that's cute. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about later on is the uh, 2259. Uh, there are a number of different alphabets that go in front of that, but it's a 2259. The one you're looking at was set up in a parking lot in Licking County during an emergency and it's about 15 feet high at the center, but we'll get more into that. Another thing that a lot of people are trying and, and having success with is the uh, coil-loaded uh, antenna. Now, you are all probably familiar with the concept of the buddy pole. Uh, this particular antenna is a buddy pole that's on, uh, that's had a serious steroid overdose. Uh, I, I'm not real sure what the manufacturer is of that, but I don't think I could lift it to put it in place. Uh, another antenna that you might consider trying uh, is called a double bazooka. I just wanted to mention this because I think it's a cool antenna. It's a half wave section of coax. So you're actually using the outer shell of a strip of coax, RG58 mostly, uh, and it's opened at the center. So the outside of the coax is the radiator and the inner sections act as a quarter wave shorted stub. And that increases the bandwidth of the antenna. We use these at uh, some old field day installations a lot. And uh, they were much broader uh, in terms of the frequency range that you could get. And they're pretty good antennas. Uh, so the question then is, uh, will they work for you at a low altitude? Eh, I don't know. And if all else fails, here is the horizontal vertical. Yeah, it wasn't my idea, and I don't think it worked at all, but it made a great picture, didn't it? <laughs> so we know the uh, common elements, the differences. Let's consider three of the top contenders uh, that are in use, and uh, I particularly like them. Uh, first is uh, the doublet. It's not one of the top three, but I wanted to stick it in here. Doublet is, is the foundation for an awful lot of antennas that we'll be looking at, uh, at in the top three. Uh, doublet is a balanced feed line antenna. It uses open wire or ladder line to feed, and it has multi-band coverage with the tuner. It does require a tuner, uh, and you can uh, pretty much operate at a number of different uh, lengths. However, it's always best this is regardless of anything, always better with a resonant antenna. Uh, that's my take on it. 
Okay, let's look at the ANGRA50. This is a doublet in that it is a basically a dipole. Uh, the military version came as a kit, and uh, there's wire on a spool, two spools of wire, a center conductor and a feed point measuring device. They came with a tape measure, so you could uh, actually do that. Uh, 468 over F, right? And it's uh, designed to be suspended between masts, those old military masts that we all know and love. However, in this picture uh, that was uh, one of the military diagrams, you can see that it's actually at NVIS level uh, because if there's a fence post there and uh, it's tied to a tree. So the idea is you can figure this as a half wave dipole. The nice thing about it is. It's, it's not any greater than any other dipole that you might manufacture, but it's, it's nicely portable and it's packaged up in a kit. Uh, I like the idea of having the antenna wire on a spool. Uh, you can have fairly thin wire because you're not going to run a lot of power through it. And uh, it's easy to adjust your bands if you're really crazy about resonance. Uh, if you go from 80 to 40, you can actually cut the, uh, uh, just reduce the length of your, your wire and uh, make it work. Uh, that's pretty much it for the, uh, for the GRA50 doublet. I've never seen one. Um, I haven't seen one at the Hamfest or Dayton or anywhere for sale, uh, but I have seen pieces. You, you'll see maybe one with one spool, so make sure you get the whole thing. Okay, here's the 2259. This is a crossed low altitude inverted V antenna setup, typically used for 40 and 80 or 40 and 60. And it's highly used by the military for the different military frequencies. And I was, uh, are, are you seeing, well, um, the diagram, the picture is on my screen is getting covered by us. So I'm sorry if that's the case, um, but it comes as a kit and you can buy it from DX Engineering and several other places. And you can see that it's not really very tall uh, and it's not very complex either. Uh, the center of antennas meet at the, uh, the, the antennas meet at the center. You can see here, we're looking sideways onto the antennas. So if I'm standing at one, say the east side, looking across the antenna, I have a 20, 25 foot length here and a 20 foot piece of rope with my 15 foot high meter. Then I have side views. I've stepped to the north side, I'm looking south. The other antenna is actually 38 feet per side with seven feet as a, as a, a guy rope kind of thing. And then you can see the center T conductor, how it's kind of wired together. Uh, it, you don't have to buy a pre-manufactured version of this. Uh, I have a couple that I use the, the green fiberglass mass pipes, and then I get an end cap that fits on top of the pipe, and I just drill a hole up there, put a, a, a UHF uh, connector on it so I could just screw my coax directly into it, and then uh, solder the wires and the antenna to that. If you look down on the antenna, you can see how it's laid out. Now, the distance of the antenna wire it can vary as much as you. <laughs> um, I, I'm not honestly very sure where DX came up with, with these measurements, although they're fairly standard. Uh, most of the time you'll see this configured as a, I'll say a shortened dipole. Uh, and that would indicate to me that it's probably not resonant, that you're gonna need a tuner on it. Uh, but a tuner is something you probably ought to have along with you anyway. Um, I, the ones I made, I have put full-sized half-wave dipoles on there. Uh, so I have uh, 66 foot for 40 and 120-ish for 80. Um, but it requires much more landscape to put something like that up. Uh, so this is one of the antennas that uh, was at the very top end of our NVIS day summaries uh, guys were very happy with, uh, with the way they worked. And like I said, we have used them a couple of times in uh, emergency situations uh, with great success. Uh, but that's there.
Now here's the real favorite for, for people. Uh, this is a long wire. It's exactly what it says it is. And there you have it, folks. Oh, wait, uh, that's, there's a little more to it than that. Uh, it does require a tuner. And uh, you connect the wire to your tuner, and you just hang it out there on whatever you have. If you don't have a tree, you can put a mast pipe up or any kind of uh, support to get it up off the ground uh, at least uh, a few feet. And then work the world. Well, maybe not work the world. They're not really uh, DX antenna. Um, one of, uh, he's now a silent key, but VE3EED uh, came up with some headaches because a long wire antenna for a lot of people, it spends, they spend hours on trying to make one of these things work and then give up and figure that they've wasted their time. Now, why is that? Well, what happens is their SWR bounces around bounces up and down, gives a very high impedance. Um, a half wave gives a very high impedance and uh, the SWR into a 50 ohm tr transmitter just doesn't like it. So uh, Jack took uh, the better part of a day. Uh, the, uh, a lot of coffee, few cigars, did the math with the aid of his calculator and found out that the problem is you don't want to have a long wire antenna that's on, on a half wave or any of the multiples of a half wave. Now, there will be a test at the end of the segment here, so memorize these frequencies and these feet, and uh, we're going to scramble them and then have a uh, multiple choice. Uh, no, we're not. So let's do it the ham way, okay? What are the good guys? Here you go. I'm gonna give you a minute or two to write these down if you're interested. These are the, are the lengths of long wire antennas that do not conflict by being a, a resonant element for any of the bands. So if you start out with, let's say, a 58-foot piece of wire, odds are it's going to work better for you and save you hours of trimming and cutting and moving and bending and jumping up and down and yelling. Uh, so most of the day, again, Jack took to find these numbers, uh, and uh, these are something that you might want to keep maybe on a piece of paper or a, 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 a laminated card if you do long wire antennas. Now, I'm just going to sit here for a second so you can write down the numbers. There is no test. If you want to, by the way, look up, you guys know this stuff. A lot of you know this way better than I do anyhow. Uh, but you can do a, a duck, duck go and find VE3EED. And uh, there's a lot of documentation that he has put on with, these, uh, uh, with, with this data. So it's, it's really good, uh, good reading. And if you're serious about making one of these long wires work, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. Those are for the total length of the wire, correct? Yes, right, yes. correct. Correct, absolutely. Now, the problem is that one of the things you need to be aware of is if you get into weather like Clem's, uh, they are prone to lightning strikes. I'm not sure who took that picture, but I'm really glad it wasn't me. Some of the things you can do with a long wire antenna. Notice that some of the diagrams actually have uh, counterpoise underneath the mounting system. In other words, just like a vertical, they're putting radials down around it, uh, around where it mounts uh, to the ground there. Uh, so that's a thing. And uh, one of the things that uh, generally can help uh, is, a, is uh, running under the antenna. Now, remember we talked about this last week underneath dipoles also. Uh, it's just a, essentially you're building a reflector that, that sends more of the RF straight up and you're actually hoping to avoid the ground, uh, the RF dissipating into bad earth, if you will. So you might try a counterpoise uh, and this one shows a one-to-one -one balance. Another cool thing is you can actually send some directionality into this uh, setup uh, by the way that you have it slanted. I don't know the height 
and I don't know whether the height would actually make a lot of difference, but understand at the bottom where it shows being connected there to the ground, that does show radials underneath that point. Uh, so in essence, what you're looking at here is, uh, you know, like we talk about on the motorized vehicles, you're looking at a bent over vertical antenna. So uh, that's kind of an interesting way to think of it, uh, but you do need something to secure the far end. Uh, and then, oh boy, this didn't show up at all. I hope you guys are seeing that, the right-hand side of that picture. Uh, what this shows is that we're going from a it's transmitter. Good. It's good. What's that, Dan? It's good, it everything's looking good. Oh, good, good, all right, all right, wonderful. Um, it shows that you're leaving the transmitter here and then you see a ground where it has a terminating resistor at the, at the far end. Uh, again, there's, there's uh, a lot of, technical stuff going on there. I've never tried it, to be honest with you, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's any better or not. Again, uh, this is try it, you'll like it. So now what? Well, what we're gonna do, I hope, between now and summer is have some fun and try them. Uh, find a typical location for where you might need an antenna like this, or locations. Uh, if you study the location, <clears throat> find out if you can anything about the, uh, the nature of the earth, the ground, and uh, the nature of the terrain that you're trying to overcome. If you're in Alaska and you're trying to jump mountain ranges, or in your Ohio and you're just trying to jump the next door neighbor's sandbox, uh, you know, those are things that you can take into consideration. Um, Take the best designs, try them out, see which work, and then uh, make the uh, pieces go into your toolbox. Tom, you had a question? Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, I did not try and write down that list of numbers, but I just checked the antenna kit and um, the 250 meter pieces available in the kit come out to about 328 feet. So. I guess I want any of your numbers that's just shy of 328 feet. Am I correct? Well, yeah, those are, those are, you're generally not going to have an antenna quite that long. Uh, hang on a second. Let's try this. So I can bring these back here real quick. Do, do, do. There we go. <clears throat> um, you're typically in, in your, if you're in some kind of emergency setup, Tom, you're probably looking at maybe 40, anywhere from 40 to 70 feet, I would guess. Um, much more than that, and you're going to have to start flagging and making sure that people aren't going to get strangled walking under it or something along those lines. Um, I'm not sure anything, personally, I'm not sure anything shorter than 40 feet would be something I'd be willing to try unless that was all there was. And you know that, you know, any antenna is better than no antenna. So uh, I'm not sure you'd want to get much longer than that. Does that answer your question? Well, I guess. Um, so you, you're saying, first of all, I, I assume this is a long reach antenna. It's not NVIS or is it? No, it most definitely is NVIS as long as it's low to the ground. If it's running anywhere from 5 to 15 to 20 feet, it's NVIS. I, uh, I have something I could add. Okay, please do. Uh, Scott, N0MRZ, uh, AC in uh, Eastern Iowa. Our uh, Aries group has, has experimented quite a lot with NVIS antennas, and we settled on uh, two years ago. What we're using is a 80 meter dipole, uh, basically with number 14 insulated wire. Um, and then we're feeding it with 450 ohm um, twin lead to an L network tuner. And we can load just about any frequency. We haven't found anything we couldn't load yet. Now what we're hanging those on is 18 of the fiberglass military poles. So what we've got is three of them, um, and then a tripod adapter, and then three more for the legs. So we've got a center in both ends, um, works awesome. But what we yeah. found out is sometimes it works a little too good. At 12 feet off of the ground, one of our first contacts from Iowa was in California. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, you'll have it. So to keep our signal from reaching so far and being a better signal closer in, we found out that if we keep a roll of uh, number 14 wire and you make it 5% longer than the antenna itself and lay it right on the ground, you were talking yep. about laying that wire on the ground. What that does is that reflects off of your reflector laying on the ground underneath the tripods and sends your signal straighter up, which means it's coming down closer to your location. So NVI antenna, NVIS antennas work awesome, especially for our MCOM trailer and in emergency situations. And it all rolls up in a small military bag. It, uh, it works great. Outstanding. That's excellent. Yeah, they, you know, again, uh, sometimes just a regular antenna, if you're at home, will be just, just the same. But uh, my experience has been that in, in a field day situation where I had a, a big loop, 160-meter uh, loop antenna at about 50 feet, and then I had my 2259 on the ground at about eh, 8 feet. I think it was two two posts of the or two poles of that stuff, and uh, some stations I could hear better on the loop. Some stations I could hear actually better on the NVIS antenna, but they weren't necessarily consistent. What NVIS antennas got me, as you know, you mentioned, was I I can get the stations closer in, and I can get them better. I might still be able to hear California, but I can get my local guys better. Uh, where if I were up at a higher altitude, I'm going to shoot right over top of them. They're not going to hear me at all. One of the things to remember is these are generally, generally home brew antennas, and you might need to change the way the antenna is set up or the measurement or whatever. And so you, you, it's a great opportunity to take new hams out into the field and say, all right, now put this antenna together. Okay, how long do you want it to be? Well, here's the formula. Oh, yeah. Now, how do you put your center conductor together? And are you going to use coax? You're going to use long wire? Just let them solder the thing together or, or you know, however you, you build these things. Uh, but it's a great opportunity uh, to build something that's uh, reasonably fail safe. And it's a lot of fun. It adds to the fun. Uh, I'd like to uh, throw the, the chat open here. I don't want to get everybody talking at the same time, but uh, if we can do a chat, maybe stick something in the chat to everyone, what your, uh, your favorite NVIS antenna is or, or something, that, uh, something that you have with that. And I'll try to watch here. Um, oh, Bob says the terminating resistor stubs out resonance, so length becomes less critical. Uh, that's the reason for the resistor at the uh, at the end of the antenna. And uh, as usual, you're losing some power, but uh, that's okay. Um, if Jay says, if no one-to-one -one balland, what does a coax shield connect? Uh, one side to, the, to one leg of the antenna and one side to the other leg of the antenna, just like any other dipole you'd build. Uh, it's real simple stuff. In the in the 2259 uh, case where I've got two crossed, I have the the shield of the coax is connected to one leg of the 80 and one leg of the 40. They 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 come together, and the the center conductor of the coax then is tied to the other two legs. So I've got uh, the same setup. I've just got two different radiators on uh, on that. Um, Somebody talked. Go ahead. Someone wants to know if any of these particular antennas are going to be quieter than the others. Uh, yeah, the answer to that is yes. Some will, some won't. Uh, generally speaking, if you have, uh, if you want to get, get a lot of wire out and put a loop out, that's always going to be the quietest antenna. Uh, Sometimes the lower the antenna, uh, the, the better off you are to eliminate uh, static and, and noise. Uh, some of the stuff we looked at last week, uh, uh, they're changing the height. One of the reasons they changed from higher antenna to lower antenna was 
exactly that to to reduce uh, noise and generally the lower antenna does a better job of that um, and it also if you're in the military you don't want the uh, the, the other side to hear your signals uh, if you go lower it's going to reduce your footprint so they're generally not gonna not gonna hear it uh, at least that's the that's the hope oh uh, let's see let's see let's see you can help me out with these chats if you want. I'm looking at them here. Okay. We're going to Shirley Array, an off center fed dipole Wyndham at 20 feet, a G5 RV at 20 feet, a soda beams quad band link dipole, which weighs under two and a half pounds, an inverted L 130 feet long, an 80 meter dipole fed with 450 ohm twin lead hooked to an inverted L network tuner. 12 feet in the air. Cool. Never Tom, what's the... Never touches metal or the ground. That's true. Tom, what's the Shirley Array? Tell me about that. It's uh, two dipoles set, in, and I don't have it in front of me, but set a particular difference apart. Um, and the, the height off the ground isn't set because you're going to vary that for just the reasons you were talking about. But they're they're set, and you use a essentially a phasing harness, so that they're sort of arguing with each other, and as a result, the signal between them thrusts straight up, um, and as a result, you have a much stronger signal than a single dipole would send up there. And it was the really? it was the uh, the antenna set that the base units during the Malayan um, insurgency were using to talk to their anti-insurgency task forces in the jungle of Malaysia. Um, so no kidding. It, it all had to be, you know, straight up and straight down because jungle and mountains like Malaysia, you know, don't lend themselves to much else. So they developed the Shirley array and it's, we put it up for field day four, four years ago, five maybe. And anyway, it worked like gangbusters. We had more contacts right in around us here in the mid-Atlantic than we'd ever had on previous field days going back dozens of years. And uh, so, it, and it, it's available online. You can even get the Australian manual for Shirley Arrays downloaded if you're diligent about searching. And, and in my case, it's just a pair of ANGRA 50 antenna kits, which I have six of uh, for Aries use. Uh, and you set up your two dipoles side by side for either 80 or 40, depending on time of day. Um, and with the halyards that come on the, uh, the uh, 155 or the 86 mass, you can uh, change the length of the thing with a trivial amount of tinkering between 80 and 40. And the halyards are so long, they don't care whether you're, they're supporting an 80 or a 40. Let's see if I can do this here. Oh, I don't think that worked. Go yeah. there. Can you see the diagram? Yeah. Yep. Oh, good, good. I just happened to duck, duck, go it. And uh, is that what, that's pretty much what you're talking about. Look, it looks like yes, a couple right. folded doublets. That's fascinating. What a great idea. Yeah, and it's, it's not at all hard to put up. Um, the only reason in that case they like the um, uh, folded dipoles is that they're resonant at 300 um, and as a result you can easily match them down to the 50 ohms that most transceivers like to see uh, without a lot of finagling. But it is a very powerful kind of antenna as we found out <coughs> a field day. Um, uh, six plastic mass sets and we had you know our our 40 meter one up in the time it takes to talk about it and another six and the 80 meter was up in not much more time so it how high great. were they tom oh they were about 20 feet off the deck either one of them um you know the the ground and there was a slight slope to the ground there but we didn't care about a slight bal imbalance off to one side of us we were just trying to, you know, wash a good piece of ground around us, and did they ever fly? I mean, it, we had great results with them. And uh, then on the last day, one of one of our wise guys in the Mark Club, 
went out and bought two rolls of chicken wire. And you know, those come in hundreds of feet. Um, and he shoves a pipe through each one of them. He shoves a pipe through each one of them and had one of the newbies walk on the other side of the pipe and they laid the chicken wire, which is like four feet across, under the blasted Shirley Ray. And he ruined everything. We were talking to, to, to Alaska places like that. Well, you know, I've, I had a couple of guys uh, first year out try that very same thing. They, they had some chain link, I think. Uh, that they laid down and tried to use that as a counterpoise, and it, if anything, it worked too well. So that's uh, that's interesting. That is really interesting. So um, I, I'd say stick with the Shirley and don't get fancier than that. You know, it's just leave it be. I like that. I like that. Um, Clem says that uh, well, you can see that NVIS is key for HF. I'm sure it is. Uh, and I'm I'm thinking that probably I've heard that Alaska is probably uh, one of the other areas where it's really saturated. Uh, uh, let's see, who was on there from Alaska? Was that Dave? Maybe not. Yes. Yeah, Go ahead, David. One of our problems with HF, we put an 80 meter antenna up, and it's, it, the bounce is about 900 miles, which means it skips over everybody. So unless you go and VIS, you bounce right over top Fairbanks and Nome and the other places you want to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. So those are two two areas where maybe more than most, uh, you guys are you're into that. Uh, Steve had the inverted L 30 feet up, 130 feet long. Man, that'd be a good antenna for anything. Never mind just NVIS. Uh, you could do... Uh, you could do what's 80 meters on that really well. I'll bet you could tune that on 160 too, couldn't you, Steve? Whoops, no Steve. There you go, no Steve. Okay, that's all right. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, what else uh, do we have here? Anybody else got any cool? Uh, the soda beams uh, are are neat. That they're a nice commercial, uh, nice commercial deal. Uh, G five RV is is always um, well. It's a good antenna. It's <clears throat> it's not uh, not a loop, but uh, if if that's what you have and, and you're running it, that's uh, that's good. Off center fed antennas are like in fad right now, so that's. Uh, that's a good thing, but uh, it's uh, more fun if they're resonant. That's just me. Um, How about a tape measure antenna? A tape measure antenna. Have you used one of those? I haven't, but I know people that have. <clears throat> yeah, they're. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't work. I mean, they're. Uh, they might even be fairly good. Fairly, fairly good at uh, Q. I mean, you get a fairly wide. Uh, uh, wide signal out of those things if they're if they're the wider tapes, wouldn't you think? You would think so. I know oh, they yeah. were when we fried them. Yeah, Dennis is holding. Is that what you got there, Dennis? What are you holding up? That is a high gain. Uh, this is their tape measure dipole that they made many years ago. Collins, <laughs> Collins used these, and these are great. And it's all self-contained. All you got to do is have a place to hang it up and hook a coax up to it. So you can put it, you know, you could use it NVIS by putting it low. You could use it, uh, put it up at the quarter wavelength, and they work fantastic. It's, it's kind of heavy, though. You have to support the center because it is very heavy. So yeah. It has, yeah. A, it has a hanger in the middle. <laughs> but uh, this thing will, I, I can't remember what the, this will go down to three and a half megs, this one. You, so, you can't buy them anymore, though. You have to buy two tape measures and make your own. I've done that, too, and I've also done them. One of the things that I've done that's really slick is you get a chalk line reel, like go to Home Depot, get one of the little chalk line reels. And I use the um, uh, braided wire from what was typically used on the old Gibson girl emergency transmitters. And I made a little portable antenna like this, but using that wire, which is super lightweight and very flexible in two of those um, uh, uh, chalk line holders. They just reel the thing up and it's all packed up nice and compact. So that was a slick way to do it. 
you know, you back in the that. day, back in the day, you'd you'd, you'd uh, disassemble an, uh, an old transformer and grab that wire. If I may, you you uh, um, you can imitate some of the GI antennas and use the chalk line containers, especially the huge ones that are. Yeah, I don't know any if any of you guys know the construction term, but one of the first lines you put down in any job site is a baseline, and and the uh, chalk line they're going to use for that damn thing is always 150 or more long, and it, you have to look for them. They're they're kind of rare, but you get one of those, two of those actually, and you use them at the ends because then you're not supporting the weight of the chalk lines and all the re remaining wire in the middle of the span. You support that at the ends where you've got to have halyards anyway. And the only thing that goes up in the middle is, let's say, a um, 450 ohm window line off an appropriate ballon and uh, a nine to one. And uh, the transmitter likes you and you can tune half the world. Yeah. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to mention uh, one of the things that was said was those uh, tripod mounts for the military mass kits. If you don't have those, you, you need to have two or three of those. They are awesome. Thanks, uh, Jan. They make life really easy. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, can I share my screen for just a moment? No, not until I give you some more rides. Have you paid up front to Dan to have uh, screen privileges? Yeah, I totally <laughs> put it on my tab. <laughs> okay. We'll charge to the dust. That's the, the, yeah, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. What are we looking at? That looks like a long wire antenna suspended between two of the masts with tripods, right? Three. Scott, you're uh, you're muted. There we go. Okay, so that is the the military tripods. These are uh, using three of the uh, fiberglass poles uh, for the base, and then three verticals. So we have twelve foot, um, and then this is the eighty meter dipole that's ladder line fed, and as you can see, it's setting up on uh, electric fence posts uh, that are just stuck in the ground. So that way that feed line, that 450 ohm feed line doesn't touch the ground. And then we've got an insulated uh, spot here where it hooks into our MCOM trailer. But uh, the third one is clear down here on the end. But that works awesome. By far the best thing that we've found so far. Wow, awesome. is that a bar where we part that? I know that's actually my house. <laughs> uh, the the north end of it uh, that's farthest away is uh, is actually uh, living quarters, and the south end is my office and tool room and my shop. Well, I'm all about RV trailers as uh, communications vehicles. I have one myself. Thanks for showing that. That's really really good. You bet. <clears throat> I I didn't realize there was a third third uh, mount off to the other side there, so that's okay. Um, this is this is good stuff, man, and and we're all learning from uh, uh, from it. So, just great. Now, uh, Bob says parking garage roofs have an embedded rebar mesh. Oh yeah, that would be a counterpoise. Uh, would you, Bob? Would you have to uh, clip in to actually physically attach, or is that just going to be excited uh, in in serve? I would imagine it's just going to work as a counterpoise, no matter what you what you've got on top of it. Do you want to mention about Ohio's uh, Envis weekend that you have every year? Yeah, sure, I will. Um, in, in, uh, we have, it started in 2015. Uh, the purpose was to get out and have some fun as the weather breaks and to uh, play with antennas. Uh, thanks, Barry. Um, this year it's on the 24th of April, and we are going to uh, take two or three steps forward uh, in addition to trying out the antennas, because by now, honestly, most of our guys have pretty much settled on what they're going to use. Um, 
but to keep the interest and to uh, take it one step further uh, with the uh, uh, possibility of a grid down power outage uh, looming uh, kind of off in the distance. Uh, I don't wake up in the middle of the night worried about it, but on the other hand, eh, eh. so what we're going to do is <laughs> put these guys out in the field with uh, backup batteries or generator power. We're going to get them off the power mains and we're going to uh, operate as if we're in a, uh, a dark sky situation. Another little challenge that we're going to throw at them is in order to uh, prove that they're there, if you will, we're going to have them send a message uh, to a, the next door district and maybe another one down to Columbus to the State EOC where we'll be operating uh, and tell us just something simple like where are you and what antenna are you using. Uh, all of a sudden it gets to be a little more of a challenge. If you're just playing with an antenna and you don't really care who you talk to, you just want signal reports, that's a good time. But now if I know I have to get if I'm in Cleveland and I know I have to get a message to somebody in Toledo, okay, now how am I going to do that? And uh, likewise, if I have to get a message to the uh, what we call the Sarge, W8SGT at the State EOC, um, that's going to be a challenge. I don't care how they get it. I don't care what form the message is. It can be text. It can be WinLink. It can be FL Digi. Um, and, you know, it could be a, a 213 or, or just an ARRL form. Doesn't matter. Just send me a message. So we're going to do that this year and uh, see how that, uh, how that complicates lives for, <laughs> for everybody out there that's gotten about their antennas. So that's coming up on the 24th. And uh, there are several other states that are doing the same thing. Uh, we don't have a patent on it. And I would encourage you, if you're in the Midwest, uh, jump on uh, 40 meters primary, uh, 80 meters secondary. Um, we'll see what to, see what we can do. If you're a neighboring state, by all means, uh, feel free to get on. And that's uh, Barry. Thank you. That's it for me. The commercial will end the the presentation, Dan. Unless there's other questions, I really appreciate your attention, you guys. Thank you very very much. Well, you're doing I a may. great job. We really appreciate it. If I may. Go ahead, Tom. Someone's comment about the garage roof. We had a set, uh, I think it's three years, well, maybe four. It doesn't matter. Uh, the job was to get a message to every single county in the state, failing none in the course of the set. We used peer to peer wind link to do it. And our station was on the top floor of a hospital parking garage. Uh, and the pluses to that are none of the guests or employees want to go to the top floor. They're allergic to it. It's never occupied. Um, so we had the whole run of it and we couldn't believe what magic that was for, for our signals. And yeah, it's, it's Maryland. It's not Delaware, but it's still just Maryland. And we covered the whole state with NVIS with no problem at all. And off that parking garage deck, it was a, it was a miraculously strong signal inbound and out. It worked really well. And as for your gag about tying in, the big huge nuts that hold the stanchions for the lighting, if you've got a large enough wrench, you can loosen one of those and stick a wire under it. Now, I'm not saying anybody tampered with hospital property. Who would do that? But it did work. <laughs> okay. Time for confessions here. <laughs> and notice, notice the two auto tuners, the remote auto tuners I just put in chat. Um, people call our club all the time over residual equipment in so and so's basement from grandpa's this or grand. Both of those auto tuners, both of them came to us for zero dollars because we were quick to respond to calls like that. Uh, and and the first thing we offered them every time was, look, we can take these to the next ham fest. We get 10%, you get everything else. And every one of these people so far have said, just get it out of my basement. I never want to see it again, which didn't break our hearts because then we could put it in the, the Aries cache and put it to work and we have. Um, and those are not the only pieces of equipment we've got there. 
that way we've gotten portable cameras that work for ATV and all sorts of stuff like that. So you just have to sort of haunt Craigslist and uh, the uh, neighborhood group watch list and uh, free cycle for your county. And uh, you'll be amazed what comes up there. You know, I just noticed something here. Little D, Dan, you're being so quiet. You usually have something to offer. Uh, what do you got to say there, WL7COO? Well, that answered that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I just, I had a... Okay. ...calling my camera and find the laptop. <laughs> what? what a, what did I do now? No, you're not usually, you're usually out there sharing with us and you haven't said anything, oh, so I, I thought something was wrong I'm with you. I'm curious how the gentleman that's using a G5 RV at 20 feet up is doing with the 30 feet of ladder line that feeds it. Well, he's certainly not standing underneath it. He's got to go out of ways with it. <clears throat> I have one, Dan, that's about 30 feet, and, and uh, I just kind of allow the ladder line to kind of loop or droop a little bit. It's mm -hmm. not straight down, and that doesn't seem to care. I was, I was so impressed with the um, ease of use and the broadbandedness of the G5 RV that I bought a double size one. It was the worst thing I could have done. Put it way up in the air, had 60 feet, a 450 ohm ladder line, made a dozen UV uh, PVC UV resistant standoffs to keep it 30 inches away from the tower leg and it worked like a champ until those things started rotting in the sun here and falling off one by one. Parts of that ladder line are still wrapped around the tower because I haven't been able to climb the tower since I put that thing up. But it worked like a champ for several years. Just don't rely on them over a long time. If I could pitch in on that, um... I was an electrician all my working life. Um, pieces of half inch um, PVC conduit, Schedule 80 preferred with couplings in the end. You drill through the couplings for your spacers and put them on with the black uh, uh, Gelrin uh, tie wraps. Those are meant to last 20 years in the sun and they generally do. You know, PVC <laughs> conduit. I, I didn't use the caps, but it was uh, class 80 PVC. And it still came apart in like five years? Uh, you know, no, it was about 10 years. We've been here 22. So uh, it, it, it didn't last as long as I needed it to. <laughs> the B&W folded dipole that's also up way too high. If I could get somebody to bring it back down, I'd make happy use of it. Um, those things are rock solid. Uh, standard length, double length. Uh, there's, there's one of them. There used to be one of them on the top of every embassy all over the world. And uh, that thing, it was a champ. I mean, you know, it was also very broadbanded. It never needed a tuner, um, except for the three, um, three DBW um, tuner that's in the Kenwood, that old Kenwood I was using. Hey, Dan, yes, I, have a, I have a B and W story for you. At the Ohio EOC, they built a supposedly EMP proof structure. And what they did was when they put the roof in, they put copper sheathing on it. And then they have like inch and a half copper cable that's in a star pattern centered in the building and then going out to the ends and the sidewalls and down straight to ground. We started out with one of those uh, antennas, didn't work. And we have literally tried every single, in, oh, in, incidentally, there's four 60 foot towers on either corner of the building. We tried every design of antenna we could possibly think of. And all we could finally determine was that the, the all the grounding and stuff is just taking ERF down to ground. We, we quit, we went out on the parking lot to make antennas. So the B&W worked fine mostly, but boy, not for us. One of our ECs in Mono County, who's really part of Nevada rather than part of California, talked about uh, he, I, he's he's in law enforcement there and they're doing something with the Marines. And he said it just blew him away because at one point they needed the Marines needed to talk to somebody 
I don't know, 100, 150 miles away. And uh, what they did is they had two six-foot guys holding up wooden clothespins, st stretching stretching a piece of wire for whatever length, you know, that they wanted to use for that, getting over that mountain that were butted up against. And he said it worked like a charm. Hey, if it gets you out of KP, why not? Well, I, I'll tell you what. Just try standing like that for an hour. <laughs> Those guys earned my respect, and I never even met them. Tell them they have to stand at attention. Right. Someone made a comment about a way to tension antennas is to use the tie-down straps you can get from Harbor Freight or Home Depot with a ratchet. That's a good idea. <clears throat> that is what the power line guys use, only they've got a more expensive version of it. Yeah. Is a strap uh, lock yep. and tackle arrangement, right? And uh, they use that with a grip, and they tighten up to just the sag that their company told them to, and then they make it fast. Can I, can I say one more thing about rebar and concrete structures? No. All right. Well, I won't. But it was no. Come on, Dan. When I was when I was I've never stopped you before. I, I was doing a forum carpentry in the summers. Because uh, it paid real well. And uh, on this one job that was just beset with problems, it kind of made me never go back to that company again. But um, I was there, I was on a wood deck when the crane shorted one of the, I don't know how, how much power was in the overhead there. It was in suburban Washington, D.C. in Bethesda, uh, just outside the, the district line. And all of a sudden, there are sparks coming out of every exposed piece of rebar in that it was an 11-story uh, apartment building. And uh, there was there were sparks spitting out of all of it. And then you could see the lights going off and the street lights going off up and down Wisconsin Avenue. So uh, those things, by definition, are well tied together for grounding purposes. And a uh, top floor of a hospital parking lot, uh, I can see that's got better ground than good old Mother Earth. It's 13.9, by the way, uh, in that part of Montgomery County, unless you were at the very top of the real high stuff. But at, at uh, street uh, it, it was, level, it's 13.9. 13, it, it, 13, it, it was those condo, okay, the, the voltage. Well, it, it lit it up. And interestingly enough, there wasn't much damage done other than to somebody's ego and, and those guys that had to go get fresh clothing. Um, <laughs> But uh, that company was scary, so I didn't take the next job, which is good, because the Monday I was supposed to report seven stories of concrete collapse because they were pulling the forms while it was you know, a day or two too Ooh. green. Ooh, and uh, se seven guys died. So Ooh. I guess I, at that point, I almost did get a little religion. Yeah, well, um, I was part of the uh, collapse rescue call out and support on that, and that was an ugly, ugly incident. Miller and Long? Oh, well, the collapse rescue team comes out of Station 27, Montgomery County. It wasn't, you know, I was off work that day. So I rolled with a support unit out of Two House in Tacoma Park. Oh, uh, that was, I, I, it's, it, it scared me good enough to never want to work for that company and to pay attention to electricity. We had just north of where you're talking about, Dan, we were working on the studios for WTOP um, and, uh, and on Wisconsin Avenue. and that, That's south of there. I know exactly where you're talking about. Okay, south of there then. And the plumber had one of these rotary saws out, you know, one of his people, and he's going to cut through the main water line, and they've dutifully cut, shut it off. Um, and I said to him, hey, did you check with the electrical foreman yet? F an electrical foreman. And I says, okay. So I went on and continued to I'd taken a break and my job was to go get it. When I came back, that saw was welded to both sides of that cut main water line and there was a pile of waste in the bottom of that trench. Human waste stank bad. <laughs> that WTOP building is two blocks from a Nike missile silo. Okay, yeah, guys. I learned that later. <laughs> okay, guys. We're running into our hour here and we're chatting, which is great. But I can close this out and you guys can log back in and I hope you will uh, and carry on the conversation. There's lots of good information flowing here.
So unless there's more questions. Before we go, I want to thank Stan because he really did do a wonderful pair of presentations. Yes. I mean, I, you know, I've soaked enough stuff. Great job. Right Amen. Yes. I want to make a comment to Stan. If I might. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, at the very beginning of your presentation, you showed a, you were showing some dipoles and uh, whatnot, and uh, one of them you said you weren't sure of the manufacturer. It was on a tripod and it had two uh, coils. Uh, that's uh, made by High Q, and that it was Charlie, who lives about 18 miles north of me right now. Oh. Been, been to his house many times. <laughs> he uh, made High Q antennas, and. Uh, he just sold his business uh, within the past year uh, to another outfit who's going to take over his, because he's well into the age of retirement. And, uh, but he did numerous uh, military antennas that are on our today's submarines and such. And the setup that you showed there, quite typical of what uh, a lot of our Marines were using in Afghanistan, Afghanistan and uh, Kuwait and Iraq. Uh, I've uh, I I work on Camp Pendleton military base here, and uh, so I know quite a few quite a few people that have utilized that sort of a setup for Nevis uh, uh, in their uh, field of work. Anyway, thanks, man. That that was really impressive antenna. That's good to know. Thank you. Hey, Stan. This is David in Alaska. My yeah. best Indian antenna I made was a double bazooka. It had a three-inch triangle uh, matchup where the coax hit the antenna, but it was the be my best eighty meter antenna I've ever made. Um, yeah, that Whiskey Six Hotel India Quebec double high Q. I priced one of those once, and it was either buy the truck or buy the antenna. So I bought the truck. But if, on, if and when I get a cyber truck. I'm going to I'm going to study that thing for several years and then I'm going to put just a single one of those on it. I don't think you know the having those that have them swear they're the only mobile HF antenna to have. Let's put it like that. Well, I've got two trucks and if you, you can see them on QRZ, they both support one of those types of antenna. Yeah, well well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been great, to put it mildly. Uh, I'm going to close this out, and I hope that you guys will come right back in again. There's lots of good conversations going, and that's what we do. We have a good time with each other. This is just like a huge club meeting of our own here, folks. So 73s, I'm going to close it out. So those that have got a, on the East Coast that are having a hard time keeping their eyeballs open can, <laughs> can go to sleep here. 73s, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Yes. I can't, thank, can't thank you enough for Anthony's menu system for these these um, um, recordings and uh, and having access to the chat. I'm getting lazy because everything's being, you know, everybody's taking notes for me. So I, I'm I'm getting more and more impressed with how useful this is. This is it's a bit of a learning thing, and we get people on board like Anthony that has a lot of good ideas. Uh, and you know, and we, we just there are some good links in the chat. If yeah, you never sure. if you never look at it, there are some great links. Yeah. And, yes. uh, uh, Q, QSO today starts tomorrow night, I think. Yes, uh, this is Thursday, tomorrow is Friday, and it should be interesting. Well, folks, this is going on forever because this is how hands are. <laughs> but I'm going to close it out, and uh, uh, guys, come right back in again if you would. <laughs>